I was a communist for the FBI. Starring Dana Andrews in an exciting tale of danger and espionage, I was a communist for the FBI. You are about to hear a strange story. Names, dates, and places are, for obvious reasons, fictional. But many of these incidents are based on the actual experiences of Matt Sabetic, who for nine fantastic years lived as a communist for the FBI. Here is our star, Dana Andrews, as Matt Sabetic. Sometimes it's hard to remember you're a decent person when every word you say, everything you do, comes out of communist manuals. For nine years... I was torn apart inside with hating of the red lies, and yet spouting them every day of the week. Only my knowledge that it had to be done kept me going, as a communist for the FBI. In a moment, listen to Dana Andrews as Matt Sabetic, Undercover Man. Undercover Man. This story from the confidential file is marked The Rat Race. Detroit. A small, smoky room, a handful of nervous men. It was a communist cell meeting, and like all the others I had attended, it was overcast with the tension of fear. It seemed like it would be a routine meeting. As we stood waiting for our cell leader, Comrade Greco, the pudgy, mustache Gorgi Tamashovna babbled his troubles to me. So she says to me, Comrade, she says, Gorgi, why you got to go to meeting tonight? And I tell her, look, Babka, how did I know your cousin was coming tonight to visit? And cousin or not, Babka, the party with me comes first. You should bring your wife into the party too, Comrade Gorgi. Comrade Matt, no one, not even Comrade Stalin, could bring my wife to a place you don't want to go. Uh, that Anna, so stubborn like this. Oh. Comrades? Oh, oh, good evening, Comrade, Comrade Greco. Greco. Comrade Sredic? Yes, Comrade Greco? Remain after the meeting. I have something special for you. Yes, Comrade. Before we take up the business at hand, Comrade Georgi Tamashovna. Y- yes? Are you aware of the way your wife speaks regarding the party? Oh, yes, Comrade. She says to... I was a communist for the FBI. Starring Dana Andrews in an exciting tale of danger and espionage, I was a communist for the FBI. You are about to hear a strange story. Names, dates, and places are, for obvious reasons, fictional. But many of these incidents are based on the actual experiences of Matt Sabetic, who for nine fantastic years lived as a communist for the FBI. Here is our star, Dana Andrews, as Matt Sabetic. Sometimes it's hard to remember you're a decent person when every word you say, everything you do, comes out of communist manuals. For nine years... I was torn apart inside with hating of the red lies, and yet spouting them every day of the week. Only my knowledge that it had to be done kept me going, as a communist for the FBI. In a moment, listen to Dana Andrews as Matt Sabetic, Undercover Man. Sabetic, undercover man. 
This story from the confidential file is marked The Rat Race. Detroit, a small, smoky room, a handful of nervous men. It was a communist cell meeting, and like all the others I had attended, it was overcast with the tension of fear. It seemed like it would be a routine meeting. As we stood waiting for our cell leader, Comrade Greco, the pudgy, mustache Gorgi Tamashovna babbled his troubles to me. So she says to me, Comrade, she says, Gorgi, why you got to go to meeting tonight? And I tell her, look, Babka, how did I know your cousin was coming tonight to visit? And cousin or not, Babka, the party with me comes first. You should bring your wife into the party, too, Comrade Gorgi. Comrade Matt, no one, not even Comrade Stalin, could bring my wife to a place you don't want to go. <laughs> that Anna, so stubborn like this. Oh. Comrades? Oh, good evening, Comrade, Comrade, Comrade Greco. Comrade Sredek? Yes, Comrade Greco? Remain after the meeting. I have something special for you. Yes, Comrade. Before we take up the business at hand, Comrade Georgi Tamashovna. Y- yes? Are you aware of the way your wife speaks regarding the party? Oh, yes, Comrade. She says too much, Comrade. Some of which she has learned from you. Uh, of course. Uh, honest, my wife, you know how to... I know nothing. Except you must convert her to the party immediately or get rid of her. Yes, Comrade Greco. Very well. Let's proceed with the meeting. That was Comrade Greco, a smart young red fanatic rising rapidly in the party, due to his ability to ignore the human problems of more simple men like Gorgi Tamashovna. When Greco and I were alone after the meeting, his guard came down a little, and I saw that he was both nervous and excited about something. You will go immediately to the Hotel Standish. Ask for the key room 117. It has been reserved for you. Yes, comrade. You will ask no questions. That is good. Stay in the room. Awake. No phone calls, not even to the desk. I understand, comrade. You're a good man to work with. <laughs> Let me speak to the waiter wearing a hat. Speaking? This is your customer with a car nation. All clear here, Matt. Go ahead. Have to make it fast. I'm in a phone booth and I've got a date. Where? Hotel Standish, room 117. Don't know what's up. Uh, we have our own problems tonight, Matt. Grayling Rawson just disappeared. I've got every available man out trying to trace him. Rawson? Well, if you can spare one, have a man whip over and wire room 117 in the Standish. I have a hunch this is important. Good enough for me. You'll be there by the time you are. Uh, keep your ears and eyes open for any party rumors about Rawson. We want him at that trial, and we want him bad. Yes, sir. May I help you? That's why I rang the bell. You have a reservation for me, room 117. 117? My name is Svedek. Oh, yes, sir. Here you are. The register has already been signed. Thank you. Wait, this is the wrong key. I asked for 117. You gave me... 655. But it's the right key. Comrade. Oh. Instructions are that you're to go right up. Front, boy. No matter what the clerk called it, the switch of rooms had me stuck. I was taken to room 655. As soon as the bellhop had left, I started to go down and inform the FBI man of the change. But even as I started to open my door, the phone rang. Hello? This is the desk clerk, sir. Everything all right? Certainly. What's the idea? Sorry, comrade. My orders. To check on my room? To make sure you stay in your room. I'll be calling you again. <laughs> hadn't missed a bet. I was in room 655, and that was where I was going to stay. While down in room 117, an FBI man was installing a microphone in vain. There was only one thing for me to do. Wait. It was a long one. Then, at 20 minutes to three, the wait was over. Who is it? Draco. Oh, come in, comrade. Oh, have the janitor with you. Inside, quickly. 
Greco. Is he one of us? <laughs> the coveralls have fooled you. He's not the hotel janitor. Look more closely. Huh? I'm sure. Rawson? What grayling Rawson? But, but, but I'm not I... Rawson. This is Comrade Matt Svetik. Uh, it's a pleasure. I, I see you know me. <laughs> Who doesn't? You're one of the most important men in the party. Exactly. Too important to have to go through the ignominy of a trial. It's your job, here. I escaped that. I must not stand trial. They won't get you to trial, Comrade Rawson. But isn't he on bond? $50,000 bond. The party will be glad to sacrifice that to save Comrade Rawson from jail. And the FBI will turn the city inside out, looking for <laughs> Let them. He won't be here. That's why you are here, Comrade Sweaty. We are taking Comrade Rawson out of the city. Now. Out of the city? <laughs> the minute he shows his face on the street... Leave the details to me, Comrade. Yes. Fine, it's right on schedule. We'll be right down. Well? All set. Let's go. Here, this way. To the service elevator. It's a great honor to be selected for this mission, Comrade Greco, but why... why you... Your record shows some intelligence, Comrade. That is why. I could not use the others like Tomashovna. Stupid ones, like sheep. You push, they go. You stop pushing, they stop. <laughs> no minds. Just wise to nag and make problems. And now you can forget your worries, comrade. There is your escape. Perfect, no? A hearse. hearse? I don't like this joke. It's not funny. Now, now, comrade Rawson. This is only a precaution against discovery until we're out of the city. The rest of the trip will be different. The rest? Yes. Didn't I tell you? We are taking Comrade Rawson to New York. It took us less than 30 seconds to get the red-faced, perspiring Rawson across the freight platform and into the back of the hearse. The commie leader wasn't made any happier at the sight of a long black coffin open for business. Oh, no, I don't ride with coffins. You have to. It's all right. It's a lovely coffin. Here, see, the inside is pitted satin. Lay down in it. Try it out. What? Lie down? Oh, no. Not until I'm a corpse. Would you rather go to jail? All right, I'll lie down. And I... I think I'll take a pill. Good. Uh, Comrade Svetik, you'll drive. Here's the uniform coat and the cap. Now change quickly. Yeah. Now, I will remain in back. If we are stopped, I am the mortician, Frederick Dodds. Dodds. I remember. Oh, good. And in this coffin will be the earthly remains of one John Carter being taken to the Greenlawn Cemetery in Rockwood, where the poor thing will be cremated. It was bizarre, and to Comrade Ross and a little gruesome, but it worked. And with Graco keeping a close eye on me from the back, there was no chance to let anyone know that a very live and wanted body was lying in the coffin. On the way, I was given some instructions. Then, a few miles south of Detroit, Graco directed me to turn into a small and decrepit wayside garage called Mike's Place. We drive right inside. All right, Mike, close the door. Right on time, comrades. Well... I like your choice of help, Comrade Greco. Introduce him. Later, my lovely Cobra. All right, come out, Comrade Rawson. Oh, I'd be most happy to. Uh, this way, please. All of you. Uh, Nerve-wracking, this business of escape. I should take another pill. Take two. It's a long way to New York. Oh, no. If I take too many, they make me violently ill. And please have seats, comrades. I'm sorry this office has much to offer in the way of comfort. <laughs> How long are we going to stay here? He talked. I just knew we could do something besides drive. <laughs> Look out, Comrade Matt. Oh, don't warn him. Introduce him. All right. Matt, this is Candy. Short for Candice. Which is short for Rosemary Wilkinson. Candice fits better. Candy's perfect. Oh. <laughs> Candy is sticky. Well, and that's the way you impress me, Comrade. <laughs> what? Let's go, Comrade. Direct it. You better forget it, Rosie. Don't... Don't call me Rosie. And Comrade Matt. Yeah? Andy can be soft and sweet, but it can also be hard. 
I don't think you'll like hard candy. Uh, uh, please, please, uh, when do we leave? Oh, Mike's bringing up your car now. It'll only be a few minutes, Comrade Rawson. Call me Grayling, my dear comrade. Mm. Did you check the radio? Yes, nothing on it. The FBI are keeping it quiet so far. Probably figure he'll show up soon. Mike knows what to do with the hearse? Sure. He'll ditch it back in Detroit before daybreak. Uh, if you'll excuse me, I think I'll wash my hands. Break off. Sit down, Sonic. No, well, all I wanted Orders. To... Until Comrade Rawson is safely out of the country, none of us will be alone at any time. The party is taking no chances on this mission. Yes, but... I, I... repeat, those are orders. Disobey them, or even try to disobey them, and it will mean your instant uh, removal. In I Was a Communist for the FBI and the second act of our story. That's Mike with the car. Wait till he signals the road's empty. That's it. Let's go. was a red-hot deal. One of America's biggest commies, arrested two weeks before, was jumping his bail. With the help of the party, Grayling Rawson was fleeing the FBI and his trial, and I was right in the middle of it. And I couldn't do a thing. Stop it. So long, Mike. Roll it, comrade. Oh, are you coming, too? I knew you'd be pleased. I am pleased, my dear. Your company is most refreshing. (laughs) Flatter. <laughs> After that coffin, anything would be refreshing. As a matter of fact, this is my idea, comrade. When the police are seeking a single man, a group can be much less noticeable. No matter whose idea, the only important thing is that I am not caught again by the FBI. Keep it in mind, Greco. My safety comes above everything else. Of course. Rosie, turn on the radio. Let's hear the news. You'll call me that once too often, Draco. News on the hour every hour, 24 hours a day. Here is your 5 a.m. edition, headlined by a bulletin just released. Grayling Rawson, Communist Party boss, indicted last week, disappeared a few hours ago and is suspected of jumping his $50,000 bond. Local authorities believe Rawson may not have left the city, but informed sources reveal the FBI has begun a nationwide search for the missing man who may be trying to escape the country. On Capitol Hill, hopes have risen high that an agreement may be reached within a short... They're working too fast. I'm not expected a widespread search so soon. Turn off the next dirt road. We'll circle south to Mansfield. All right, pull up here. Where are we going? That big white house with the elms in front. Uh, looks like it's all clear. But you stay in the car with Grayling, Rosie. Matt and I will make sure. Draco, is this the right house? That sign there says... Miss Blanche Harris, piano lessons. Yes, I can read. Yes? Good morning, madame. It's Miss. Uh, Miss, of course. I, uh... Have a child you want me to teach piano? Mighty early to be discussing... Uh, uh, My little boy's very anxious. He just arrived from Detroit. Oh. Do you know the answer to five times five? Of course. Thirty-one. Ah, come in, comrade. I am Greco. This is Comrade Svetik, Comrade Harris. Comrade Harris. Comrade. You are alone? Yes, I was just starting breakfast. My first pupil won't arrive for an hour yet. Uh, Where is... uh... Outside, in the car. We need to stay here for a while until things quiet down. It's an honor to help Comrade... Please. It is best the name never be mentioned. I understand. I have to put you up in the attic. It's kind of dirty, I'm afraid... Haven't been much on climbing those stairs since I picked up a touch of wood. Oh, it will be fine. (laughs) Just as long as it keeps us out of FBI hands. 
Miss Harris's attic, like Gaul, was divided into three parts. One large room, a bath, and a tiny additional room against the eaves. There were cots and blankets and stores of canned goods, a fair supply of debris left by previous tenants, and one window, securely boarded and curtained against showing a light. Many of our comrades have stayed here while evading the police, but of course, never anyone so important as yourself, Comrade. Thank you. The party won't forget your work. Uh, the men can use this large room. And I get the broom closet. Good enough. There's a special radio set yonder. You can pick up Toledo on it. Is there anything else I can get for you? I'd like to check the papers. I'll run out and you get... You stay here, comrade. None of us will leave this attic for any reason until we leave it together. <laughs> Baker was plain enough. As long as he was around, I knew my chances of contacting the FBI were exactly zero. My one bit of cheer was that as long as I was not heard from, the FBI would be able to guess I was in on Rawson's escape and that he had not yet left the country. So they would continue to search. And in this, I was right. Today, the manhunt for Grayling Rawson goes on undiminished. Everywhere, the authorities are seeking the communist boss who jumped bail and disappeared from Detroit last Friday night. As a public service, we're broadcasting his description again. If you see or have seen such a man, please contact your local police immediately. I repeat, if you see or have seen such a man... Hmm. Don't they ever give up? Oh, no, not again. Comrade Harris must give lessons to every child in Mansfield. Little monsters. After this is over, I'm going out and strangle everyone I see, just on general principle. Well, it won't be long. Search or no search, we have to leave here in two days to be in New York by the 18th. The 18th? Why the 18th? You'll know in time. And stop asking questions, you'll live longer. Well, I think I'll take a pill. It wasn't much. But Rawson had given me an idea on how to get rid of Graco, at least temporarily. I remembered what Rawson had said about two of his pills being too much, that they made him ill. So the next day while Rawson was washing, I stole four of the tablets from the gold pill box in his vest. I mashed the tablets into a powder and kept it in a fold of paper, ready. During our last meal before leaving on the 17th, I palmed the folder of powder, waiting my chance to slip it into Graco's soup. Then I realized I'd have to make my own chance. Well, oh, without a can opener in this place, we'd starve to death. At least with that hot plate, we've had warm food. That sun. Look, is that smoke coming up huh? over that floor? Well, I, I don't see any smoke. Oh, I, I guess I must have been mistaken. It looked like a wisp of smoke coming up there. Uh, you're seeing things, comrade. Uh, well, that's enough for me. But you didn't finish your soup. I don't feel like it. We'll have a long drive tonight. You may need it. Huh? Uh, perhaps you're right. Uh. Uh, that's enough. We'll be leaving as soon as it gets dark. It is time, comrades. Good. We must be in New York by morning. Comrade Greco, something wrong? You look pale. Oh, just a stomachache. I'll be all right. Oh, Greco. Greco. Oh. Bad food. I knew it. We'll all die. No nonsense. He, he just got a stomachache. Should I get a doctor? No, no doctor. Just let me rest. We must leave right away. There's no time for you to rest. Uh, you must get me away. I don't think I can make it. Comrade Svedek. Yes? I must trust you. Boat leaving New York tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock. What boat? Polish freight at Orneda. Arrangements all made. Good luck, comrade. After Comrade Harris furnished Grayling Rawson with working clothes and a hat, we were on our way. Graco being left behind gave me hope. But I bided my time until we were entering Williamsport, Pennsylvania. It was after three, and both Rawson and Candy were dozing as I pulled up to an all-night cafe. 
Then as I reached for the door handle, a small, cold circle touched the back of my neck. It's a gun, Matt. Draco's gun. I don't understand, Candy. Why? I don't trust you. I was only going to get some... Orders were for us to stay together. Now, if I were you, Matt, I'd drive on. We made it. There's the Arnetta. You'll be safe before you know it, Grayling. Yes, I suppose so. <sighs> Strange. In some way, I... I hate to leave America. It has its points. Well, you'd better stay here. Goodbye, comrades. I watched Rawson go to the loading foreman, and in a moment the commie was in the line of workers carrying a box into the freighter's hold through the loading hatch. Whatever I was going to do had to be done fast. At that moment, a burly stevedore brushed by us. I threw a shoulder into him, and he hit the deck. Then he got up, and with a hitch of his dungarees, he started for me, followed by a half dozen others sensing the brawl. Come on, Matt. Let's Come go. on, Dal. I'll take care of your boyfriend. Peddle your papers, ape man. Hey, you crumbs. You insult my girl, I'll hand you some knuckles. You'll hand me some knuckles. Make room, you guys. I don't want his blood to splash on you. <laughs> Beat it, beat it. it was the hard way, but I was free of candy, who faded fast at the sight of the police. Me, I got a free trip to the station. Once there, however, I was permitted to make a call. It was to the FBI, and I told them where they could pick up Grayling Rawson. Fifteen minutes later, a visitor entered my cell. Hello, Matt. No. What are you doing here? I was assigned to handle the set. That's a nice mouse. Both of them. Oh, never mind my eyes. Did you get Rawson? Nope. I had a sale just before you called. Oh, no. <laughs> it's all right. Our patrol boats are intercepting the freighter before she gets past the three-mile limit. They'll take Rawson off and bring him back to stand trial. Oh, yeah. That's better. Rough go? Rough enough. And this little deal's going to take some explaining to the party. Oh, we've covered you on that. Oh. A story to the press is that somebody on the freighter tipped us off. Thanks. Well, that ought to clear me. Sure, why not? All you did was get into a fight over an insult to your girl. Uh, you'll forgive me if I don't walk out with you. She's a pretty one, Matt. What's her name? Candy. Hard candy. <laughs> I'd done my job the best I could, but there was no feeling of satisfaction yet. There wouldn't be, not as long as mechanics named Mike and piano teachers named Harris allow the rottenness of communism to warp them into treachery and treason. It was up to me to live with my enemies until the job was done, which meant I would continue to walk alone. We'll return in just a moment. the warm security of family and friends can blind us to the threat of subversive elements hard at work trying to destroy our way of life. We must meet that threat with alertness and determination that freedom can and will survive. Join us next week when we bring you another exciting experience of Matt Svedek, won't you? Mm-hmm.